What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm back today to give you his review of the New Balance 991 V2 from the City Exclusives Pack in this Europe or Spindle Tree colorway. So this shoe is part of New Balance's City Exclusives Pack, which is seeing exclusive colors of this 991 V2 drop at select cities or select regions around the world. So some people are calling it the Power Rangers pack because the colorways for the shoes themselves pretty much looks like the colorways of your classic Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, obviously without the White Ranger or the Black Ranger. But anyways, each colorway is exclusive to certain regions, so this was the Europe exclusive colorway, and they released at Star Cow in Paris. But then there's also a blue colorway that was a US exclusive that released at Social Status. And then there was a Japan exclusive pink colorway, a Asia Pacific yellow colorway, and a China exclusive red colorway. So these are set to release throughout August, and the retail price, at least for this green pair, was not cheap. So after shipping, it came to about 450 Canadian dollars, and that's before duties and taxes. And I believe shipping these to the US was somewhere around the mid 300s. So this is a very high price point, no doubt. But because they're only available at Star Cow, that's your only option, unless you're buying these on the secondary market. So the official colorway for this shoe is Spindle Tree and Black, and the style code is U991OB2. So the New Balance 991 V2 is an extremely popular sneaker, and coincidentally, it's one of New Balance's newest silhouettes. So I've reviewed so many 991 V2s on my channel already, so this review is pretty much identical, minus of course, slight material differentiation, and the colorway itself. So diving right into the details, starting things off with the toe box, this is covered in this open style mesh, which is done in this crosshatch style. Right above this towards the laces, we have a reflective silver 3M layer, and then overlaid on both sides of the toe box, we have a synthetic gray leather. Surrounding the front toe cap, we have genuine pig suede, which is done in a very bright and bold green color, which draws some similarities to the Kith Danel Kathari 991 V2, which was extremely, extremely limited. Moving downwards, this same green suede covers the entire mid panel, however the top two eyelets are constructed out of a grey coloured TPU. Stitched on top of the mid panel, we have this reflective New Balance N logo, this is done in silver, and then moving downwards we have more of that black coloured mesh that we saw earlier on the toe box. Beneath this, covering the bottom of the heel, we have more of that green suede, but we have an oval shaped cutout on the lateral side, revealing a 991 embroidery which is stitched into a reflective silver layer. In the middle of the heel, we have a synthetic gray leather with V2 branding and this contrast green stitching. And then on the top of the heel, this is another reflective silver 3M layer. On the bottom of the heel, we have this TPU heel cup, which has New Balance branding. This gives you additional structure and support around the back end of the sneaker. And then as far as the laces go, so this pair comes with two different lace options. The one that I prefer, the one that I think gives it more of a sleek look, are these flat style black laces. But if you like a bit more contrast, they also come with a dark grey coloured lace as well. Underneath this, the tongue is crafted out of that same black coloured mesh that we saw on the toe box and the sides of the shoe. We have a synthetic leather layer in the middle which helps to hold the laces in place. Here we have V2 branding. And then on the top of the tongue, we have New Balance Made in England 991 branding, which is embroidered onto the synthetic leather. The back of the tongue and the interior of the shoe, this is covered in a grey coloured liner, and the collar of the shoe is pretty minimally padded. And then as far as the insoles go, these come with a decently padded foam line insole. It's finished in the same grey finish on top, and we have New Balance Running branding pressed onto the heel. So the upper of the 991 sits atop this midsole, which is crafted primarily out of New Balance's fuel cell foam technology. So the midsole is painted in black on the forefoot and grey on the back half. And in addition to fuel cell, we also have Absorb SBS technology. This is visible with these pods on the lateral forefoot and heel, and this helps with impact protection and additional shock absorption. And then for the outsole, this is crafted out of a mix of black and grey coloured rubber, and then running down the center of the outsole, we have this exposed fuel cell foam. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And for those wondering about how these fit, to me these fit like most of my 991 V2s in my collection, so I personally prefer to go true to size. My foot measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. I get the 991 V2 in a size 10. It fits me great from a width perspective. They run a little bit long lengthwise, but not enough that I'd want to go a half size down. If you have a really wide foot though, you may experience some discomfort around the toe box area, right around the ball of your foot. This area, I do admit, sometimes they do require some break in time, but I think it's hit or miss depending on the specific pair. 
It's probably because of the slight inconsistencies in the factory. So if we're talking about a couple millimeters here or there, that could be the difference between a shoe that fits comfortably and one that feels a little bit snug. So I feel like for most people go true to size and it should fit you fine unless you have a really, really wide foot, then you might want to consider going up a half size. To give you guys a point of comparison, I also go true to size or a size 10 in other New Balance silhouettes like the 2002R, 1906R, 860V2, and some of the made in UK models like the 991V1, the 1500, and the 1530. Whereas I go a half size down to a 9.5 in a lot of the made in USA models like most of the 990 series, the 992, and the 993. Moving on to the comfort, so these are a very comfortable sneaker, which makes sense considering they utilize both fuel cell and absorb technologies. So this is a really well-balanced sneaker. You feel some level of plushness with this midsole, but it's not an overly soft, overly mushy, and unstable feel. And because the materials on the upper are extremely soft, straight out of the box, there's really no breaking time required, unless you have a bit of a wider foot, then you could need some breaking time around this area right here. But in terms of the actual materials, they are extremely soft. So that coupled with a cushioned and supportive midsole, this is gonna be a great shoe to wear for casual use. Finally, in terms of the quality and craftsmanship. So first off, the material quality is your typical made in England New Balance quality. So we have some genuine pig suede, which feels very nice and plush to the touch. But other than that, the rest of the shoe is all just synthetic materials. So we do have synthetic leathers, we have some meshes and reflective panels. So it's nothing amazing, but as far as a typical New Balance goes, it's right in line with what you expect to get from the brand. And from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, at least for my pair, I was a little bit disappointed. I thought the stitch job on this shoe was a little bit sloppy. Some of the stitching on the upper was a little bit loose. You may have noticed it throughout this video when I do those close-up shots. So that was a little bit disappointing to see. Other than that though, I thought it was fine. It was pretty much free of glue stains. The paint job was solid as well. And the panels were relatively consistent between my left and right feet. So with all of that out of the way now, let's toss these on feet, I'll lace them up, and I'll show you guys how these look. All in all, this 991v2 City Exclusives pack, it's not really anything that's reinventing the wheel. You're pretty much getting the exact same shoe with a color swap. So for me personally, I was just more curious to see how these were in person, more so than me actually wanting to collect the entire pack. Honestly, most of the colors don't really do anything for me, but the European colorway, this green one, this to me was the star of the show. This is such a bright and bold shade of green, and it really reminds me of the Kawasaki New Balance 993s, but it really comes down to personal preference on what specific accent color speaks to you. Are you more of a blue colored fan, yellow, red, pink, or are you like me and you think the green one is the best one of the bunch? Let me know your thoughts down below and let me know, did you also pick these up from Star Cow or was the super high retail price on this shoe, did it kind of scare you off? As usual, if you guys enjoyed this review, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check me out on x at sean.go spelled out, and visit my website at seango.ca. So thank you everyone for watching, hopefully you guys enjoy this review, and I'll catch all of you in my next video.